Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. Really appreciate this. A lot of familiar faces. And uh, we are going to discuss, and Skate 3.1 in particular, we're going to discuss the new material editor and material library. So I'll give, I, I want to lay out some ground rules first, because this workflow that we're going to be talking about today is specific to Revit. And I, I mentioned this before, in lots of design applications, sometimes you need something to look like something. In Revit, lots of times you need things to mean something. And so there's a difference because in Revit, the material isn't just the way something looks. It's also how something schedules. It's also how something tags. It's also how something looks in a plan or a section or an elevation. So there's, there's lots of ways to see and understand a material beyond just the real world nature of that material. Okay, so I'll lay out the, the way I've looked at it. I'll, I'll kind of describe it this way. I think the material editor, it simplifies a lot of the iteration that we have to encounter and work through in the Revit material editor. For example, uh, you can iterate materials, you can tweak them, uh, you can tweak the type controls in the Enscape material editor, and I'll give an example of that in a moment. Um, you can quickly swap out material properties, but it's not going to replace the Revit material editor. It really creates a hybrid workflow. And the reason for that is because you still have to, a lot of times you will have to initiate a material in the Revit material editor in order to see it in Enscape. And there's some particular workflow there. So let me just get started by showing you guys the new material editor and library in 3.1. And, and just working sequentially, I'm gonna work from left to right. So on the left side of my screen, you should see the Enscape material library. And I'll just click on that and open up the library. Okay, so these are all the Enscape materials. You can favorite them, you can search them by type, you can also search them by name and filter down certain values. And so this is the library that Enscape provides. There is no way, for example, we can't create or initiate a new material here from this library, okay? So if you've got a material that you wanna use in Revit and you just wanna create a new material as a starting point, you can't create new materials from here. This is an example of where you'll have to go back to Revit. So this is the material library. I'm gonna close the library and I'm gonna open up the material editor. So the material editor has some idiosyncrasies with regard to Revit. First of all, all of the materials that Enscape sees, the only materials that Enscape sees will be generic material assets. So your metals, your woods, your stuccos, your stone, your paint. If you're gonna to wanna to edit that material, brick, if you want to edit that material in the Enscape material editor, it needs to be a generic type. That's what Enscape sees. Okay. The other thing is here we can't create new materials as well. So let's just, I'm just going to go ahead and select one of these materials. Obviously, this is a material in Revit. It is a generic appearance type. And just let's walk through the menu of what Enscape provides us. So we can see here under the type value, we have the ability to kind of parameterize and, and give further information to a Revit material that we can't necessarily do in Revit. I mean, we can add glass and we can specify water and air and certain material properties, but for Enscape's purposes, a material that's a carpet, a material that's a foliage or grass, these create certain behaviors in Enscape and so you can only get to them from the Enscape material editor or it's just really easy to. Um, I'm just gonna click on the material here to the side. It's referencing this material in my custom library, but I'm gonna click on this material and look at some of the other properties. And in some cases, maybe maybe some limitations, or at least just this is how it works right now. We only have the ability right now to work in metric units. So you're gonna have to get your handy calculator out and convert you know, decimal feet and inches down to millimeters in order to make that conversion or change the sale of it. You can't set the origin here, so if you want to set the origin of material to a certain location, you can't do it through the Enscape material editor. These are just the kinds of limitations that are presently there. Um, let me back out of this. If we look at some of the different texture types, uh, when you do choose a material, actually, this is a good point. So here's the material type. This is just a still image. 
But when we click on this and we have an option to open a new image type, this is where you'll see that it's not just still images that can be specified. There's no drop down in the type for animated textures. But when you select an image, you can apply an animated texture here just as if it's another image. Um, the difference with doing it here versus doing it from Revit is in Revit, the animated texture is specified in the identity tab. In Enscape, you really don't see, if you apply it via Enscape, you're not gonna see that setting in Revit. You're just gonna see it inside of Enscape. So in some cases, I actually like using a still image as a starting point in Revit, get the origin set up, and then go over to the identity tab and put it in the video path. Revit will still display, in a realistic view, it still, it still displays that still image, but in Enscape, it just overwrites the image, it just ignores it and plays the video. And I like having both at times as, as opposed to removing the still image and having the video. But you can't see both options here. Um, another thing that you can do in Revit that's a little bit difficult in Enscape right now is if I select this object, it will take you to the instance or type parameter that's associated to that material. We can't do that directly from Enscape, but you, you kind of can if you enter BIM mode, which is here, or you can press the B key and you select an object, you can then scroll down and see the material properties. And then you could open the Enscape material editor and select it. So that's just a bit of that hybrid workflow. Cause if we select it here, and then we go into the Revit material editor, we're being taken directly to that image. Where in Enscape, it's kind of a two-step approach. You can identify it, you have to remember the material name, then open the Enscape material editor to find it. So if we go back to Enscape, go up into the material editor, um, we can do a keyword search, and uh, that's called screen something, so R-E-N, and there we're getting the value that we wanted. Um, we can't, yet edit all of the material values that are available in Revit. So for example, uh, with something like a floor material or ceiling material or some kind of siding or brick, in Revit we have, in addition to have having the, uh, the sort of real world texture of that material, we also have um, an associated hatch pattern for sections, an associated pattern uh, you know, for the floor pattern or ceiling pattern. And that pattern actually helps us set the origin of the material for rendering purposes. Those other parameters, those other values, we can't get to from the Enscape material editor. So once again, overall, it's very useful for tweaking and applying materials that have been created and being able to see them very easily and quickly. Um, but at the moment, I think it's going to be a hybrid workflow. It's not going to replace you can't say, oh, I don't have to learn about the Revit material editor now because I can do everything from Enscape. You're gonna still have to learn how the Revit material editor works. But in many cases, you'll find that it's easier to tweak a material inside the Enscape material editor than inside of Revit. So if you're gonna start, so let's look at two scenarios here. We're gonna start a material, let's say from scratch, you just wanna create a new material. You actually have to initiate that material from the Revit material editor. So I've just initiated a keyboard shortcut to open the material editor. And if you want to create a new material, you need to create a generic material type for that material type to show up. Okay, so if you don't create a generic material, it simply won't show up. And, and to illustrate that, we can see here there is a material called aluminum. And under the appearance type, it's a generic material type. We can see there's another one here called, uh, <laughs> looks like one of them is misspelled and one of them is spelled correctly. Uh, this aluminum is a metal appearance type. So if we go into the Enscape material editor and do a keyword search, we're not going to find that aluminum. It, it's not going to exist here because it's not a generic asset, okay? So you can initiate, you have to initiate a new material in Revit. You can tweak it, but then you can further modify it in Enscape. So for example, with this stone wall, I'm just gonna verify the name of this stone wall. Okay, stone dash Verduno. Gonna cancel this and go back to Enscape. So this material's already been created, okay? So if we wanna tweak how the material displays, we can go to the material editor 
me just see if I can get Enscape and Revit open side by. That's interesting. It must be a, it, this happens with Zoom. So I'm just going to type in the words phone, select this material. It's going to bring up the properties and then we can start to adjust certain values. So it's at the, at the present, it has a, a bump map in Revit, but there's no displacement wrap map in Revit. So if we want to really exaggerate the depth of uh, these individual stones, we would probably want to change this to a displacement map. And then I'm just going to go back to Enscape without doing anything and just see the results. Uh, with the displacement maps, I found it's with a bump map, I typically just use the same material again. If there's enough contrast, I just use that same image again to create a bit of bump or uh, yeah, bump is OK. And just like wood grain and things like that. But when it comes to displacement, it's really useful uh, to have that material. The negative values, if we go into a negative value, you could tell that it's going to become pretty severe and the dark areas tend to uh, they tend to come towards you. Whereas if we go to a positive value and it doesn't take a lot, those darker areas are going to appear to recede. So this is how we can actually use the Enscape material editor with Revit, with Enscape side by side to tweak materials that have already been created. Okay, so what's the process of getting a, an Enscape material to work in Revit? And here's where the idiosyncrasy is. We already have a material called Stone Verduno. And if we, if we use a material from Enscape and swap this out, it's not just going to change the name or it's just not going to change the appearance type. It's also going to change the material. So we have to be careful um, when we're, when we're, using different materials because you're also changing the material name. You're changing uh, how that material is going to be affected uh, with return with, with regard to graphic information, with sections, with tagging. The other thing that we can't do here is we can't rename materials. Okay. So I'm going to start a scenario where we actually have to maintain the present name that is in Revit, but we want to swap it out with a material that's been created in Enscape. And so to do that, I'm just going to go back to the Revit material editor. We're going to find this material. And so that in this case, uh, this uh, material, I'm just going to rename it. So that it's a little more generic, okay? This is where this is a scenario where we actually want to keep the material name. Okay, so we've got an existing name and we've got all the appearance values the same. So here's the catch in Enscape. If we go to the Enscape material editor, we can't just delete the old Revit name because if we delete that name, all the materials associated to that name are gonna go away. So we're gonna open up the Enscape library and the first thing that we want to do is let's just find a nice stone for this wall. So I'm just going to select stones and see what we have here. Oh, okay. This could look pretty good. So we're going to use this material. And what we'll do is select the material from Enscape, and then we're going to import it so that it can be seen in the Enscape material library. And we'll also be able to see it inside of Revit. So I've just selected this value and then import selections. And it's just going to take a moment spinning wheel. Okay, now it's done. Now if we go back to the Enscape material editor, we will be able to see this. We'll close this value, we'll open the material editor, and we'll type in stone here. And we can see this is a stone value that we just opened. So keep in mind, if the, if the idea is that we are going to use this material with the existing material assignment, we just can't assign the value here because it's gonna change the value of the material name, okay? So what we wanna do in some cases is actually use a new material, but not change everything else about that other material, right? I hope you guys understand that difference. I'm just gonna open up the material editor quickly. If you, if we go to this material and there's graphic information, there's a model pattern, there's hatch patterns associated to this, and we delete this material and then specify a new one, 
we've deleted that assignment everywhere. There's no automatic way to put it back. Okay. If we select this geometry and then swap it out for the other stone material, this stone material doesn't may not have all of the information that we need. It may have a graph. It may have an appearance value that looks like it should in the real world, but it doesn't have your model pattern for the surface. It doesn't have your drafting pattern uh, for the hatch. And so we need to be able to get the Enscape appearance type in our existing Revit material. And the way to do that is a little, it's a couple step process, okay? So what we're going to do is go back to the Enscape material at a, or material library, and we're gonna search for this material. Okay, and here it is. And we want, what we want from this material is only its appearance type. We don't wanna use every value. So if we click on this option and we select export material package, and then we, we just wanna direct it to a central location. So I'm just gonna set it, uh, set it here on the desktop for right now. So we're gonna say save. And then we're gonna go back to this other material. And this is our existing low stone wall. And we don't want this material anymore. We want the other material package we're going to ex we're going to select this same option, but instead of export, we're going to import the texture that we just exported. So we're going to select import. We're going to select the material package that we just exported from Enscape, and we're going to select open. And now that material has been swapped out. So all we've taken in is the material type. We haven't taken, we haven't replaced the uh, identity information. We haven't replaced the thermal information. All that stuff is still really important in Revit. And if we just take the Enscape material and jettison everything else, we have to then recreate maybe four other values for that material that Enscape created. Whilst if we export the material package and then import it into our existing Revit material, it's only going to overwrite the material package. It's not going to overwrite everything else. And we've still got those other values and they're still correct and consistent and, uh, and coordinated. So that overall is the workflow. Let me just open up my little. So overall, I think what, what this gives us is a very useful way to quickly iterate, to get that visual feedback. It's a hybrid workflow because we've got to work between the Revit material editor to initiate a new material that we might want. It's custom out of the box. Um, so we can't create new materials in Enscape. We can only use the ones that are there. If we want to use an Enscape material in Revit, we probably want to export the material package and then associate it to the existing material in Revit and just overwrite the existing material package, keeping all of the other important, uh, important analytic values. Um, Something that I have not resolved is shared projects. If we have a shared project, I typically put all of my custom materials at a top, all in a folder at the top level, no subfolders for different material types. I put that folder inside the project folder and then in Revit create an additional render path to that material. The Enscape materials are not saved in that additional render path folder by default. Actually, if you go to the um, to the material library, it'll tell you where they're um, where they're saved down here with the little gear option. It tells you where the materials are saved inside of your project. So my my concern is, and I haven't figured this part out it yet, is if you have a multi-user project, I'm almost of the mindset that you should take that Enscape material go and find it in that other location and put it into your custom material folder so that not only the project can see it, but everybody working on the project can see that custom material, including people who aren't necessarily using Enscape. Um, and then one last thing I will mention, you want to be careful when you're changing types. So if I go to uh, a particular material type and we're just iterating. So here's screen image and we think, oh, this is a self-illuminated material. And then you decide to change it to something else. Uh, you can't just change it back and be certain that you're going to get all of these materials. So what I found is there's no undo button in here. If you 
go a couple steps too far and then you want to get back to where you were. It doesn't always remember the material that was there as a starting point, but you can use your Revit undo option here while the Enscape dialog is open. And when you select undo, it'll actually take you back to that previous choice if you've, if you've chosen accidentally and it's jettisoned the material assignment that you had. So just be careful when you're changing these types. If you change it and close the dialog, uh, it's not like you can just open the dialog and set the material back and it's going to remember where everything was it it actually loses it so just use that undo button to get back to where you were and that's the overall workflow for the material editor it's just a quick walkthrough walkthrough of the library of the material editor and i think some i, I hope some good guidelines about using the material editor in this sort of hybrid workflow with revit and uh, I'd like to you know open this up for you guys and you can ask any questions that you might have i think a number of you've actually downloaded uh, the update, and you've got some some questions and opinions about that. So please go ahead. Hey, Phil, this is Angelo. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Angelo. Thanks, Mike. Well, yeah, it actually, uh, so it actually in, says Angelo and Nancy. You know, just. <laughs> we're we're a team. <laughs> uh, so in general, we're essentially controlling the appearance tab of Revit materials. Is that yep. what we're working Yeah, with? that's what the Enscape editor does. It only controls the appearance tab and it gives you options on types. But when you change that appearance tab, you're not changing or having any influence on other analytic appearances, you know, the surface pattern, this, the hatch patterns and so on. So the danger there usually when you're messing in Revit's material editor is that it might be referenced to multiple materials, right? Yep. So usually you have to duplicate it to make it unique. So and that still, and that still <laughs> catches people all the time. They yeah, change the material yeah. and go, why did it change? And yeah. in Revit, you bring up a great point, Angelo. If you select a material and you go to the appearance tab and it doesn't have a little zero here, that means that material is being referenced by other material names. And apparently this is a really common workflow in the film and stage space where I might have a brick and that brick is used for lots of other things that all have their own material name. So, yeah, when you change that material in Revit or if you select a material, if you just go down here and select an Enscape material that's showing up in your Revit library, you're golden. You're fine. Mm -hmm. But when you swap out that appearance type, you're going to be swapping out the appearance type for many things. You're absolutely right. So we're changing it through the Enscape material editor without the ability to duplicate it. So you'd really have to duplicate it yeah, first. Just, yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. If you want to, if you want that one off, you're going to have to duplicate it in Revit first and then go back to the Enscape material editor. Got it. Okay. I think for a couple of things, it, it really simplifies the process. I mean, if you don't, if you don't remember how the formatting works for, an, a, for a, a, an animated texture, if you get that formatting wrong, it's just really hard to go back and kind of look at that long absolute path and the name and everything. It's, it's just tedious. Whereas now, you know, you have the ability in Enscape to just simply say, oh, it's an animated texture. And, you know, when we select it, this is the regular texture. Actually, it doesn't. I'm just finding out now. It doesn't. So this is an illuminated texture for this screen. Okay. But in Revit, I've specified an animated texture through the identity tab. And the reason I do that is because in Revit, I might want some still image screenshots that just show that image. I don't, Revit's not going to show an animated texture. But when I see it in Enscape, I want to I have a question about overall kind of uh, development because I, this is what 0. 0.5, 1.0. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What, what's the, what's the discussion or has there been a, I mean, ideally for me, it seems like this would be a great setup to start using what native substance materials or some other ways of extending Revit beyond the, the severe limitations yep. of their, material editor yeah well i think the the biggest one in revit is you just don't have enough you, you know they i think rightfully you know revit's been around 20 years they hit a lot of the complexity and 20 years later that technique that 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 complexity is now a necessity 
And so the first pass a couple of years ago at the material editor of, of, of simply allowing a, uh, a finish or a clear coat, but we still can't control uh, the relief value. We, we only have a bump map and the bump map is good for the grain in the wood and the, you know, the clear coat's good for those scratches and that, that finish value. But actually, you know, we can add cutouts, but that cutout is kind of a very binary. So, I mean, what do you, what do you do for your best practice and how can you see this either working into it or, or maybe not? Well, if we, if I could just export a material out of substance and open it directly in here without, um, you know, having to go through the convoluted process of uh, converting it or loading the maps manually, I think yep. that would be a, a huge help. Yeah. And I think, I think they are going to simplify this in the discussions that I've had the things like, you know, the material editor here, if I grab a material for, that's imported from Enscape at present, you would have to export the material as a package and then import the material package, you know, into your existing material, and then you can move forward. But simply the ability of saying, well, I just want to right click on this and just replace this appearance type without having to do that multi-step process would be helpful. Yeah, the first thing I tried to do is drag a material out of the material library right onto an object. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 right. Like it could uh, be that easy. <laughs> like SketchUp, you just drag it over and, and drop it on a material. Sure. And that, you know, that kind of workflow would be really yeah, elegant yeah. and it would change the appearance value. But then you've got, you know, have you just undone thermal value? Yeah, you're breaking up. Well, if you, if you do that, if you were to drag and drop material to iterate quickly in Revit, does that undo other analytic values that might be important, right? Because if you take that Enscape material, it doesn't have the definitions for cut patterns, surface patterns, uh, thermal values. Yep. You know, what do you do then? And you're actually affecting your scheduling as well. Because if you drag a new material and it says, oh, this is now the material name for that surface, what have you just done to your scheduling? And if your scheduling is very, you know, is highly refined, that can undo things. So, so we just, I think, I think it's just good to go through the material editor to show people yep. what's there, but also, you know, you want to be aware of, of, of where the workflow, you need to be a little more deliberate and careful. Any other questions, you guys? You've been very patient. Thank you very much. I hope this was helpful. Hi, Phil. Can you hear me? It's Hanny Absolutely. Here. Yeah. Hey, Hanny. Good day. Hi. Um, yeah, I, I had a chance to play around with it yesterday. Um, I did exactly what Angelo did. I tried to drag it on as my first instance. Um, but yeah, I found it quite good. One of the things I found with my designers using Revit and materials, especially when they're learning, is that mm. it takes so long to open a dialog box. So when they are in Enscape and they just want to tweak the material i think this will be beneficial uh, they can just yeah. use this and just edit that so i think that's going to be really useful second thing the the video editor that's a lifesaver that amount of time just makes it a lot easier kind of right? tweak. yeah definitely yep. um i think i spend one time two hours and i didn't notice a small little space <laughs> between and I, th I thought it was just wasn't working um sure that's that's helpful i think generally the the enscape material library there's about 250 materials right now so presently yeah uh, yeah so are you looking to expand on that or it should be all the time yeah, yeah. Okay. you know and, and the other thing is you know the universe uh, i've kind of got mixed feelings about creating material editor because the material is already out there it's called google you can search yeah. any material and use a keyword seamless texture and you will yeah. get an enormity of beautiful textures but it doesn't mean it's easy to use and and people want things where they can easily find them so to your point about users you know, for them, they don't care necessarily at that, at that point in the design process about anything other than the appearance type. They don't necessarily care about the R value and the hatch patterns and the service patterns. They're just trying to pull up a material. And, you know, the only thing I would, I would really like is that if in Enscape, you know, open up the BIM tool and you can, you can select something and from here be able to edit its material will be, you know, it's just like, I'm already there. I don't want to have to look at that and then close this dialogue to open another dialogue to remember the name of the thing that it was. I just want to be able to get to it in the moment. Would love to be able to do that kind of workflow that we're used to in Revit where everything is contextual. If I select it, I can do something. 
and I think that that would probably be useful. Um, it's funny you say that, Phil. I think I think that was the second thing I checked. I went onto the bin and looked if I could change it there. So yeah, I think that's. I think we're all kind of in the same thinking. Um, yeah. I think I think I, I've worked previously in, in other places where they spent so much time creating a material library, but the designers don't use it. They use Google. They look at image from the manufacturer. Yeah. So I I do get that. I think my biggest thing is the get material editor, but I can see. If there is something very similar, um, that's quite good. And especially yeah. people not experienced with cutout. I was looking at the glass, frosted glass and the patterns on there. Yeah. They, were, they weren't too bad neither. So that, yeah. they were quite yeah. useful. Yeah. The, the ability to simply, because I'm seeing all the materials related to this component. So the ability to mm -hmm. select it from here and open up the material editor, just that, you know, I'm in the moment, yeah. I'm in context. Let me make a change. Be great. Great, great, great. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, honey. Well, good work anyway. Thanks, Phil. Absolutely. One more question. I have one not related to the material editor. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Inkscape yeah. in, Inscape interface uh, funkiness. Yeah. Uh, could you you just show the 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 sequence of steps to save a new setting, visual setting to a view? Because I've had it reset kind of mid mid step through that process. Oh, so if you want to create a view in Enscape, like how would you get that view to sit still? No, no, no. Uh, when you assign a new visual setting to a view, and sometimes for some reason it has reset all the image, you know, settings I've had. So if yeah. I customize the way I want it to look, I want to assign that to that 3D view. For some reason, sometimes it just resets to some sort of generic default. Well, and in, in 3.0, originally you had to create the view name and then mm -hmm. you had to say, okay, and then you could go back and assign a visual style and make it a favorite. It was a two-step process. Yeah. Um, that yeah. has changed now in 3.1. So if we want to go to our view management tab and navigate to a new location, you know, change the time of day, and they go, okay, I like this view. And now we can create view. And in this moment, right, we can favorite it and we can drop down and say we want a particular visual style. And now the option to create is all in one go. Got it. Okay. That's helpful. Yeah, that was a nice tweak from uh, 3.0. Well, I think we're good, everyone. I hope that was useful. Um, I think it's a great for first pass at editing materials directly inside of Enscape and being able to do more useful work without having to jump between design applications in, uh, in every case. Thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any other questions and you were too embarrassed to ask because you're in a room of peers who know lots and lots about Revit and Enscape, uh, just send me an email and I'll privately respond. And I hope you guys all have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. Thank you very much. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, glad to do it. Take care, guys.